Okay, let's go live on Instagram as well. Oh no, it says there's no radio broadcast. Oh, are we, we, we want to go live on Instagram. Philip is gonna try and organize that. So, sorry about that, here we are. Um, lovely to have you with us today. I'm Karen Cinnamon from Smash in the Glass, the founder of Smash in the Glass. This is the beautiful Philippa Louise. Hi. Um, one of my favorite makeup artists. We've been working together for years. She's fantastic. And I am feeling really literally naked tonight because I am makeup free, totally makeup free. Um, I've never ever go. done a live. Oh, cool. We're on Instagram live as well. Hi, Instagram. Hey. Um, I'm here with Philippa Louise. We're going to be talking this way, but do join in the conversation Instagram. So, we are recreating Meghan Markle's beautiful, glowing bridal look. And I'm the model, and I have got no makeup on, and I've never ever, hi Lisa, hi Michelle, I've never done a Facebook Live without a scrap of makeup on. So can we get some makeup on please? Yes, yes, we're going to get started. <laughs> I'm we're feeling get so started. naked. We are here, we're going to talk to Philip in a minute, just let me, just let me just say, we are here live at the Wedding Gallery, um, which is the wedding department, I think the world's only wedding department store in London, isn't it amazing here? We're it's in dreamy. the beauty section. We'll be doing a tour at the end. Hi, Michelle. Got loads of people on Instagram as well. This is so fun. I've never, ever done like a makeover type of um, Facebook Live, but we just thought we would, both of us have had so many comments about Meghan Markle's glowing bridal look. And I want you in the comments, what, what did you think of her bridal look? Did you think it was a bit plain? Did you love it? Let us know in the comments what you thought of Meghan Markle's bridal look. And Philippa is going to show us how we can recreate that look. Um, so should we get going? We will get going, yeah. So I just thought I'd start off by talking about um, the, the Meghan Markle's actual look for the day. It was all about having a really, really dewy, fresh look. It was very, dewy. very dewy. <laughs> no pun intended there. <laughs> uh, really, really dewy, fresh, um, fresh look. Nothing too heavy on the face. And loads of my clients and loads of brides and loads of uh, our friends have always said, you know, how do you get that kind of no makeup, makeup look? Yes. It's really, really difficult. And people think it happens really quickly, but it actually is one of the looks it takes one, sometimes the longest to do because you've got to get that perfect you know you don't want to see the makeup on the skin look but she wanted to keep her freckles she wanted to keep her thing. freckles which obviously um has gone completely viral now and everyone wants to have <laughs> the megan skin. freckle yeah the <laughs> megan freckle but i think it's really lovely why cover it up it's a natural beauty and she is a beautiful beautiful lady so we want to have that um that skin kind of showing through. I think we all want to look like ours, well, in this day and age, in 2018, we all do want to look like ourselves on our wedding day, but the best version of ourselves. It's quite rare in the real weddings that we publish that you see someone who's just kind of lots of lipstick and big eyes and crazy hair. Some people want that, but generally we yeah. do want that. So, so yeah, let's go for it. We'll, we'll talk it. while we are, while you're doing my makeup. Go through to our Facebook and our Instagram audience. <laughs> I've never done um, an Instagram live at the same time. Is it okay if I talk to the camera you can while talk, you're doing it? You can walk and talk. I was just going to say that we've actually just prepped Karen's skin already using the um, By Terry uh, products to really create. You want to get the canvas. That's really, really important to show that the skin looks amazing. You want the canvas there. So we've prepped the skin. We use a gorgeous serum, a gorgeous moisturizer to really illuminate that skin and set it up for some gorgeous, gorgeous makeup. So I'm, I'm going to seeing shiny nose shiny oh, forehead darling don't worry we are going to go through so <laughs> teaser <laughs> um, you go ahead and talk i'm just going to pop the primer yeah. on which is going to basically make your makeup waterproof which is key for your wedding day if you want your makeup to last long and you don't want those tears to ruin the makeup as well um, so for everyone that's watching, um, let us know also if you've got any beauty questions whatsoever for Philippa. She is really something. Um, we've been working together pre pretty much since Smash the Glass started. I can't even remember who got in touch with who, but for five years now, we've been working very closely together and she is genuinely amazing. She knows anything and everything. We did a Facebook Live together a year ago, which was one of so our most good. popular, a beauty Q&A. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and Philippa is here to answer. Even if you're already married, don't think they just have to be about bridal makeup. <laughs> Maybe you want some concealer tricks for morning eyes or whatever it is, pop them in. And also tell us where you're watching from. I'd love to know. One of the things I love about these Facebook Lives is um, the community of, of Smashing the Glass all around the world. So let me know where you are in the world. And also, are you in the industry? Are you engaged? You just love watching our Facebook Lives. You love Philippa. Pop it in the comments and, and let me know. So, um, 
First of all, um, there's also, I think afterwards, I'll pop a link in the comments to all the amazing real Jewish weddings that Philip has worked on on Smash the Glass, some beautiful brides. Um, and I know you love your, your Jewish weddings, but we'll come on to Jewish stuff in a minute. I want to hear, first of all, what did you honestly think of Meghan Markle's bridal look? And were you surprised? And, and, and tell, tell everyone what you thought and who the makeup artist was and what you think was going through her head. So the makeup artist was a makeup artist called Daniel Martin, um, who is a long-standing friend of Meghan Markle. British? Um, can't remember, actually. Um, and um, I have to say, I loved the makeup. I thought it looked flawless. It looked effortless. I, th I don't think she could walk down the aisle with, you know, a massive smoky eye and crazy wacky lashes. Because I just it's don't. A it's the royal family. Yeah. I just don't think that's something that's going to work. Although you could push boundaries a bit more. But I thought she looked very, very natural, though, almost as if she wasn't wearing any makeup. But that was the key. Yeah. That was the key, and that's what the, that's what Daniel Martin wanted to do. You know, she wanted her frank for her freckles. She wanted her freckles to show through. Yes. And so. In order to do that, you don't want to be plastering the skin with makeup, so you really need to buff uh -huh. it. You really need to buff it through. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I think on the eyes, um, she's got really, really gorgeous, gorgeous eyes. I think she could have totally have got away with wearing um, a little bit more definition on the eyes, but it may not have been her cup of tea. Yeah. She may have wanted to play it safe. You know, the makeup was so beautiful, and you could take it to one level, and it could be a little bit too much for what Megan wanted on the day. And talking of eyes on the wedding day, like what what tips are there? What happens if someone does want a heavy eye and they get teary? I mean, right. So, I I don't really worry about that because I always use waterproof makeup. I think that is key. Yeah. And every bride always says to me, "I'm going to be streaming. What am I going to do? I don't want my makeup to run. Don't worry." So we prime the eyes first. I always prime the eyes. Got a fabulous um, primer that helps everything stay put. So primer, primer. I don't ever use a primer. I okay. have used a primer on your eyes at the moment, which is um, one by Nars. Nars, have you got any favorite. great products that you want people to know about? Yeah, this is. I mean, you can flash it out. This one here. This is by Nars called Smudge Proof face absolutely swear by this one <laughs> um, reason being is that it doesn't make your makeup crease so think about it some brides whether I'm doing if I'm doing uh, whether I'm doing an Indian um, wedding that's going to start at 4am in the morning or whether we're starting at 9 o'clock in the morning if you don't prime your face if you don't prime your eyes you're going to fall into the trap of having your makeup crease you know when suddenly you open way. your eye and it's all collected in the crease bit and then it just yeah it's it just looks like a sweaty mess basically <laughs> just like this way how me. i often feel <laughs> um i've got loads of comments coming in and we've also got some pre-submitted questions but again if you've got any wedding beauty everyday beauty um philip has got an amazing youtube channel called blend and pop so it doesn't just have to be bridal beauty get those questions in she is just so good at answering anything and everything so Chloe's saying I have a question about the summer and freckles when I get a bit sun kissed I get freckles pigmentation what can I do to cover them up so some people want to cover them up that's absolutely fine if you want to cover your freckles up then um, what you just need to do instead of using a full coverage um, foundation all over the face use a lighter foundation and the areas that you want to cover up, whether it's pigmentation or the freckles, you just go in with a, a full coverage concealer or something. Um, but just in that area, that's all you kind of really need to do. Just um, answer for me. Um, Hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> it does. I want to do it. So I'm just buffing this in at the moment. It's all, it feels so nice. It's really, really nice. And I'm, do you know what? I'm building it so slowly. It's all about small layers. You don't want to be throwing the makeup on to the face. You want to be buffing it slowly. So who's got a party I can come to after this Facebook Live? Um, Me, I invited comment. you out. You're <laughs> <laughs> going home for dinner. I know, um, but I still want to have the party invites, even if I can't go to them. Okay. <laughs> I'm just really feeling like I need to go somewhere. Well, why don't we ask whoever's on? I know my friend's down in Chelsea at some street festival, so if you're watching, can you please send us a VIP invite to it? <laughs> Brenda's asking, what is that style of makeup? Is it makeup that you can contour with on the prime skin Does that the one sense? that i'm using right now yeah this is a foundation that i'm using so um you couldn't really contour with it so i would need to go in with a stick foundation to do that if that hopefully answers your question um right just gonna have your face forward for one second everyone's saying check. they can't wait to see the finished look ah 
Um, Sean... No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I need to face this way, two seconds. Um, Sean is saying that she loves your makeup tonight. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Um, hi, Godwin, Charlotte. Philippa is gorgeous. Can't wait to see what she creates. There's a lot of pressure. I know. <laughs> Philippa's done my makeup before. I know that she's going to do wonders. Now this is such a lovely foundation because you can just build it and just so warm it into brand? the skin. This is, I'm using the Hourglass foundation, which is uh, Illusion Hyaluronic Hourglass Skin Tint. Illusion. This one here. It's really, really beautiful. So you can have it quite light or you can build it um, to how you want. Or you can use it as a tinted moisturiser if you just want it for an everyday as well. So I'm just going to warm it into the skin with the fingers quickly. And on Instagram, Makeup by Danielle said, I also like using airbrush, makes for a beautiful, subtle, waterproof look. So tell everyone about, I know one of the things that you do that there's still a bit of, not everyone knows exactly what it is, is airbrush makeup. So what? I do do airbrush makeup. That's kind of what I'm known for in the industry um, with the airbrush makeup. Um, and it's, it's, some, a lot of brides say to me, oh, no, 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 I don't want, um, I don't want the airbrush to look, it's going to look too, too like a magazine cover, too polished, too heavy. It's actually quite the opposite. So if you're someone who wants to not look too made up, it's actually really lovely. Designed for HD, so if you don't want to see anything too much on the skin, airbrushing is really lovely, and obviously you're going to be walking down the aisle HD ready. Who yeah. doesn't want that? Absolutely. And also, um, we, we've got some pre-submitted questions that I'm going to go through, but one of the things that comes up a lot also is about makeup trials. Can you tell me, should you have them? If you don't, if you're not crazy about it, can you have another one with the same makeup artist or should you choose someone else? Oh, How long do they last? How long should you laugh at your wedding day? Like the practicalities of makeup and trials. I think, I mean, the majority of trials for myself, um, I usually just do one trial and then we mm. talk through the look and we perfect the look over the telephone if she just wants more mascara or whatever. Um, occasionally I do get, uh, I do do another um, trial and the reason I do that is whether the bride wants to try a different look. Maybe they've um, said to me that they want to have um, their makeup a certain style but actually when they've had it done then they actually want it lighter or they want it heavier so I wouldn't don't be scared of speaking to your makeup artist and saying do you know what I'm just not sure if that's right for me because at the end of the day you, the makeup artist is there to make you feel really good for your mm -hmm. wedding day and it's my job to make you feel happy so um, communication is it's so brides, good all brides your are worried about that and you know you are the client and we will do the best we can to make you look fabulous for your day <laughs> And um, the other Just thing about your makeup artist is they are with you on the morning of your wedding, so make sure that chemistry is there as well, that you feel good around that person. And <laughs> <laughs> I've got to work quickly and with they're this. A, they're a calming influence. Um, so yeah, if you get any kind of feeling of, you know, feel comfortable around them, that's also not a... a you have, to feel, you have to feel comfortable yeah. with them. Same with your hairstylist, same with your photographer. Really important with the photographer as well. Um, because you're having a relationship with them. And, so all your and you need to feel comfortable. You've got to really like them as people as well as their work. Yeah. If they make you feel uncomfortable in any way, whether it's on any level, um, it's a little bit of a warning sign. Um, Definitely. By the way, this is such a fabulous product. It's a Daniel Sandler. It's been used quite a lot. But it's a Daniel water Sandler. It's a watercolour. So you a can use color. this... You can use this on your cheeks and your lips as a stain. It's really, really, really great. I'm one of those people that I <coughs> kind of get a, a colour or a lip that I really, really like, and then that's it. I just don't veer from it. You um, don't? No. So I've been using, for instance, the same pressed powder since I was 15. But does it Actually, work? I, but does it work? For, hopefully not the same one since you were 15. <laughs> not the same one. <laughs> um, but does it work for you? Yeah, I mean, I did ha I did um, get some new lip colours this January. I went with a stylist friend of mine, and it feels like I feel like a new person. I wear much stronger lip because she says I can handle it. And, and you can yeah. handle it. Whereas I, I used think to I just told wear you lip that last time. You did, and now I'll just put it on it. You know, any time I go out, and I love just it. This way, so but it's easy to get wherever. in your sort of safe habits with makeup, isn't it? Yeah, you do fall into. You fall into what's comfortable. So I'm just just doing a bit of highlighting on the cheekbone, bow. which we all know Megan has. Um, so I'm just actually going through with the Charlotte so Light nice. Wand, which is 
if you follow me, you know this is my favourite product Tell in the world. Tell everyone that product is. It's the um, Beauty Light ones by Charlotte Tilbury. So you just doss I'm it. I'm loving it. This is how I'm I've got all this highlight on here. Yeah, we are. We're putting it on. No, no, but I want to turn this way. It. All the way this way. We've got a, a question on Instagram from Doves and Peacocks. He says, what would you say are makeup musts for event makeup? I'm so lazy and get a bit bored doing my makeup. And there are so many products that can get to, to so confusing. Do you mean that you are in events and that you, do you think she means, is that, is that makeup that you, for yourself, when you attend events and you're wearing the same look? Like kind of what I just As in how to create a different look, you mean? She says, what would you say are makeup musts for event makeup? Um, well, event makeup, I think makeup must is definitely having a primer to make your makeup last longer. I think that is key. something I've learned today, actually. Yeah, having a primer on there and um, long wear products, mm. waterproof. If it's if it's a hot if it's a hot event, then you want to make sure that you um, have got waterproof. Highlighting your lip there. You want to make sure you've got waterproof uh, makeup. So in case you're going to cry, have your waterproof mascara. Have your waterproof. Um, liner but also which i'll go into at the end when i finish the look is having a setting spray which is this one here but you can have any brand and a setting spray will hold your makeup in place and it will help literally it will help it last all day all night long it's fantastic keith another thing you're going to be buying well that i'm sure going to make you broke at the end of today <laughs> keith hairstylist wants to be in our instagram live video he wants to split screen with us Who's that? I don't know. Someone called Keith Hairstyle sent a request to be in your live video. Ah. But I think we'll keep it just smashing the glass and fill a purse a day. Um, sometimes I like doing split screen Instagram lives and taking questions. But Keith, let us know what you want to say in a comment, won't you just? Um, um, Dabs and Beacon says, oh, that's good. So primer and setting spray. Yeah. Setting spray is like my key. For I've never even heard of these things. Look up for me. Do you know what? Loads of people years ago I've, used to use hairspray, but it creates Ooh. such. A, you hear it all the time. Well, can't use hairspray. No, you cannot use hairspray because it makes the makeup sticky. And hairstylists do say this to me. Just it's fine. You don't need to cover the makeup with the hairspray. No, you need to get a um, because there's different setting sprays. You've got a setting spray for someone who has oily skin, so it helps control the oil. You've got a normal setting spray, and there's loads of different ones out there. Another question. Tamar, what tinted moisturiser or foundation do you recommend that also has SPF, thinking of an outdoor wedding? So I'm a huge, if you're talking about uh, tinted moisturiser, I'm a huge fan of the Laura Mercier tinted moisturisers. I'm sure there is an SPF in them as well. Uh, foundation wise, I know the Charlotte Tilbury one, um, again, is a really, really light, uh, light coverage and has a low SPF in. Um, and that the Charlotte Tilbury foundation you can use like a tinted moisturiser because it's so light. The no, light, light wanted one. Oh, I love. Of yeah. course I love. Yeah. <laughs> Look up for me. I love it's amazing how she's created oh, no. that name. I mean, everybody loves Charlotte Tilbury. Um, we did actually get a question in about Perfect. hot make wedding and makeup. Where was it? Um, ah, Daniela asked, what tips do you have if you are getting married in a hot country and you don't want your makeup to melt? <laughs> <laughs> so what you want to do, question I get asked a lot, is make sure you find um, either a waterproof foundation. Um, I know that MAC do a really nice waterproof foundation. Um, or just finding an oil-free, ideally, long wear foundation. Because you want that, you know, um, Lancome, they do the 24-hour foundations. You want a long wear foundation. There's no point going to a hot country and wearing a tinted moisturiser it's going to slide off Absolutely. so you've got to go as much as you don't want that heavier look in a hot country you've got to compromise a little bit and go for something a little bit heavier i agree i don't think i've ever seen a destination with kind of very heavy looking makeup yeah um uh, can you can you can you get away with a kind of interesting smoky eye oh totally yeah eye wise yeah. it doesn't matter really what you do although i would probably say don't put um i'd probably say don't put thick black liner on when it's 40 degrees because as much <laughs> as it's waterproof it's too much it's yeah. your skin oils are going to react with the makeup so it is a less is more um finish you, really and do you find these days that brides are kind of requesting the same thing like they just want to look like the best version of themselves or yeah i always say to my brides when i speak to i always like to speak to them on the phone and always say that the best thing really for your makeup is to look like yourself which is a bit more fabulous yeah 
yeah. just a bit more fabulous version. Yeah. So, so I just wanted to show you, um, when I did a little bit of research about what Daniel Martin did on Meghan, Meghan Markle, um, which was an article I read on Glamour, he actually, um, from what the article said, was he didn't really use much powder. He just used powder in that kind of T-zone area, and then went in with blotting, blotting sheets afterwards to absorb the excess oil. And the reason he did this um, is so that the uh, makeup still looked really, really dewy. Hence why Not you saw dewy, on the skin. <laughs> hence why you saw on the skin, it was just like really, really glowy and it didn't look cakey. You don't want to put much powder. Now, obviously, I like to do a little bit under the eyes just to set that um, concealer. Just literally just here I don't I mean, there's nothing really I want, I want to keep the skin looking quite it's quite amazing. fresh um, already how you well obviously you're doing wonders but, um, if anybody's just joined us when we started this Facebook live I felt naked as I don't know what um, I've never ever gone on a Facebook live without makeup but I had to for the, for the before and after for today and to enjoy um, Philippa's wonderful makeup artistry talents and I'm starting to feel really good actually now. <laughs> I said, but you, you've got such a wonderful job, you make people feel good. That's what you're doing. <laughs> I do love it. And you know what? You've got to just really enjoy weddings. And there is a lot of pressure there with is. weddings. You don't get a second chance. There is a lot of pressure because the bride always feels very, very nervous on the day. But that's where you have your trial and you get everything absolutely perfect, which is why if you, um, you want a second trial, it's important so you're not worried the night before, oh my God, I don't know what um, makeup I'm gonna do in the end, and is it gonna work? So, going back to your question about having another trial. Yeah, and what tips have system. you got for people? Um, how do they go about finding a makeup artist? And, you know, there's so many to choose from. Um, you know, what, what, where do you? Where? I think you just. I mean, obviously, you've got your recommendations through Smashing the Glass. Exactly, a great place. To um, be, you know, to they're re really, we really reputable hand, company. And we really hand pick. I think in five years we still yes. only work with about three or four makeup artists. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, we have we have our recommended vendors that are highly hand picked. Of course, Philip is one of them. I think Philippa was one of the first people that we started working with. Um, you just get it? it. You just get it. Was I? Yeah. Aww. Um. So, yeah, that's the answer. Go to smash the glass as it was recommended. I mean, obviously, sometimes um, we get brides who think they're just going to do their own makeup, and I always say, do you know what? Just treat yourself and get it done freshly because it's about lasting as well. Yeah, it's about lasting. I mean, but. Yes and no. If you've got a bride who loves to do their own makeup, I also love nothing more than sitting down and designing that look yeah, with the bride because it's very satisfying to know that I've, like I did this with my friend, one of my really, really good friends, Jilly, who's getting married in Scotland, and I couldn't go because I was about to have a baby literally a month later, so I designed the look for her. And same with one of my really good friends in South Africa, I decided to not, went to the wedding, decided not to work, and I designed the look, I took her off to Charlotte Tilbury, we designed the whole look for her wedding, taught her how to do it, and there we go, really. And do you recall that apparently Kate Middleton did her own makeup? Kate Middleton did her own makeup, and do you know what, I think that's really nice, because then yeah. you've got, you take something away, so I, I, I'm a bit, I'm, I, I would never say no, you have to, have to, have to have a wedding makeup artist, but, if you're going to do it yourself, at least hire someone with the expertise so you know the right product to use. Exactly, and long lasting, exactly. um, waterproof eye products. Um, Brenda's saying, Karen, you are naked as a jaybird. <laughs> Is that the phrase? <laughs> I felt very naked when exactly. we started. Brenda from America, lovely Brenda, she's into our oh. Facebook lives. <laughs> um, yeah, I, my advice would be definitely, definitely. I mean, I was that lights there. going through. Hello. Hello, Dewey. Hello, Glow. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Turn all the way this oh way for one second. Oh. It's going to be like the big reveal when you get the smoke machine rolling towards the end. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. I actually should go down to the wedding gallery and get a, um, a white wedding dress and something similar to Megan's neckline for the full look <laughs> yeah absolutely um no it just feels special when someone does your makeup it's a special day and you know like you say it's not about being caked in something it's just about feeling your best self and 
spoiling yourself with a makeup artist. So I was guilty of that. I was thinking I wasn't thinking I need a makeup artist. And my lovely friend Sharon, who actually set, set me and my husband up, she said to me, no, you need a professional makeup artist. And oh, really? She worked for the Daily Mail at the time, and she knew a few, so I just asked her. Like, I literally had no clue. Um, and we've got Rabbi Andrea Frank tuning in from New York. She's saying, eyeshadow question. What is the trick or tip to keep it fresh for over eight hours on the wedding day? So, um, the best, the products you want to use eyeshadow wise, uh, you want to make sure you've got primer. So I use, the one I used on Karen is by um, NARS, called Smudge Proof Eye Base, but there's also an amazing one. you put one. a link to the primers in afterwards? Or yeah, 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 I'll do, I get a I'll do product links, but the, um, the uh, other one which I absolutely love is by Benefit called Stay Don't Stray and it's actually almost got like a bit of concealer in as well so you can put it all around the eye that is amazing to keep your eye makeup in place um, the NARS one is quite a clear product so it won't act as a concealer but it will act as a great base for your eyes it's just evening your eyebrows Not up don't forget some of our pre-submitted um, oh yeah ask away um, Diana asked actually any thoughts on falsies false eyelashes on your wedding day are they too risky no do you know what we're not using falsies today just time wise but um, I'm a huge fan I always recommend using um, false eyelashes to my brides but I'm not a fan of the, the strip lashes I like using the clusters so I literally like to put a couple on the outer edge just to wing the eyes up and just enhancing the eyes or for the ones who want a little bit more volume I build up about 15 on each eye okay. um, and it looks fabulous um, but I definitely say try try it if you've never used it before no, try it sounds like a silly question but I'll ask it anyway yeah um, if your makeup artist puts your false eyelashes on, how do you just how do you take them off yourself? Are you talking about the clusters? Yeah. So I I put them on with waterproof glue. Yeah. And then you can you can actually keep them on for a few days. Yeah. You just gotta be careful how you take your makeup off. Um, so you think it's a good way you'd recommend it? I love it, but it's not for everybody, and you need to really feel comfortable. So sometimes for some brides putting eyelashes on maybe that step too far I've got a client who I did put um, lashes on and she loved it but she was unsure it just wasn't her so we're gonna stick to her normal natural lashes because she felt more comfortable and you don't want to kind of not feel comfortable walking down the down the down the aisle 100%, yeah I think you've got to have full confidence did you have them on your wedding day no just all the way here for one second um, I had a nice smoky grey eye. Yeah, what was your whole look for your wedding day? It was all about the eyes actually. Did you come, did you um, leave it in the hands of a makeup artist or did you? We did a trial and um, I mean you can't have lips and eyes together so I wanted one or the other yeah. and we went for eyes. Unless you like the 80s look. <laughs> And we're talking about strong lips and eyes, not just lips yeah. and eyes. Yeah. Just to clarify. And um, talking about a lip, one of the questions that came in actually was about a lip. Um, Rachel wanted to know about lip colour. What's best with a white dress? Would love something a bit bolder than nude. Would Very Victoria by Charlotte Tilbury work? Oh, so really difficult for me to tell because it all depends on your skin tone. It's a beautiful, beautiful colour. But for example, for me, Very Victoria, if I was to wear that... What colour is Very Victoria? Right? It's, uh, no, no, no. Very Victoria is like a very, very nudie. Oh. It's like a nudie with a hint of mauvey pinky to undertone to Sounds it. But nice. it is lovely, but you need to define everywhere else. But I'd need to see your skin tone to advise on that. Let's just have a look at the brows. As we know, Megan's brows were fabulous on the day. They were. So yeah, if you're just tuning in, we're talking all about Meghan Markle's fabulous bridal look, how she achieved that glowing, gorgeous um, style and beauty, and it, it looked effortless, but actually as Philip had um, told us right at the beginning, that often takes longer than any other kind of bridal look. And we thought um, we'd recreate it tonight and give you some tips as we're doing it, how you can create it yourself. Um, and we're also taking all kinds of beauty questions, anything at all you've got. It can be about your bridal look, it can be just the day-to-day -day beauty question. Pop it in the comments and... Oh, this colour is so nice on you. <laughs> what colour is This it? is a champagne tone. You probably can't see it. I can see it. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> um, so this is, this is your chance to get all your beauty questions answered, however silly they sound. Pop them in the comments. Or just tell us about you. I want to hear about 
about everyone that's watching. That's my um, favorite thing about these lives, connecting with the audience. I always like to know, like, what's the the one thing you get a little bit worried about on the wedding day with the with the makeup and in terms of how you choose how you choose who you're going to book. Um, it's always interesting to, to kind of like hear that. Do you, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And if you've got any worries or concerns, yeah. um, we're here to help. Um, or, or perhaps you haven't even thought about booking a makeup artist or do you want a hair or makeup or both together? Um, That's an interesting comment on the whether, whether to book, book them separately because yeah. obviously there's makeup artists who do hair as well. It just depends what your priority is in terms of whether you want someone who specialises specifically in wedding makeup or wedding hair. Yes. Um, Do you work with this particular hairstylist? There are loads of hairstylists, when well, I say loads, there's a handful of hairstylists I work with that I've worked with for years. Can you recommend each other? But it's who I trust as yeah. well, you know. I and don't want to, to go on to a job where someone's going to delay me by half an hour putting the uh, wedding you know, thirty minutes behind. I, I like to. Work, I have people who I work with, but I never say you have to use them. Yeah. I think you you have it's to go onto stress. the website. You need to speak to them. You've got to have a trial, and see how you feel. Um, Jeanette wants to know in your wedding bag what three essential makeup artists will be in. Not artists. <laughs> makeup items will be in it, and why? So just the top three. In in your wedding bag. Yeah. Okay. I suppose if you're carrying a little touch bag to touch up. So, 100% a setting powder, so... Um, Which one? Any, I, I mean... A, is that what the item's called, a setting it's a, powder? Yeah, it's a powder to de-shine your T-zone. So if it's a hot day, or if you've done a lot of Israeli dancing, or any sort of dancing, you want to make sure you've got your powder loose or pressed. And you need to put that on after the dancing? Yeah, I always say to my brides, like, as soon as the ceremony's done, if your makeup artist hasn't stu stuck around, um, then you may want to just powder your teaser if you've got a little bit hot um, under the hooper and just do it ver at various times. Do you do, do you do makeup on the grooms? Yeah, well, I, do you know what? I get asked by the, um, the, the father of the brides a lot because they get, a, they get really left out. Oh my God. But I have done makeup on a groom, but that was an unfortunate circumstance that he'd very much injured himself and fractured his face. Well, that doesn't count. But uh, he was ever ever get any, <laughs> Do you ever get any kind of grooms that want you to... But I'm never with the groom, so... But when they're, if they're at the trial... Close your eyes one sec. If they're at the trial, then... Um, yeah, no, they don't. No, <laughs> they don't, do they? It's a, it depends. It depends what type of wedding it is, Karen. Oh my God, I feel fabulous. Let's just finish your eyes off. Close for me one second. I know we need to keep them open so you can see the comments coming no, through. No, not at all, not at all. So I'm just going, I'm going to do a slightly heavier um, eye this is than, your than Megan Michael. It's, yeah, it's just what suits you and what I think your eyes could get away with. A kind of brownie, bronzy, smoky eye. And comment in the box, tell us if you're watching what you thought of Megan's dress and her whole look. Um, what did you think about it, of the dress? What did I think about it? Yeah. I, I, for me, I thought she was going to go in a dress that was going to have a lot more detail on well, it. Well, everyone thought it was going to be the Ralph and Russo, didn't still, they? It's still, yes. So it, it was like, it was literally the other extreme. It, completely. Yeah, and, have had, yeah. But she wasn't going to walk down the aisle in a really, really tight dress because it's just not, you know, it's probably but not I think, appropriate. I think she's so forward thinking. I pe think people thought she would could get away with anything, whatever she wanted. The heavily uh, embroidered, the very tight, I mean, um, we just didn't know what to expect. Um, Look, come on, she still looks incredible. incredible. That, that train on her, well, I love that veil was just and incredible, also, I realized, and the crown as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that I was realized that she was making a huge statement with a veil. Yeah. So she could with the fifty four countries or whatever, how many there are in the Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So she didn't she couldn't make a huge big statement. It's almost like one or the other, but yeah. I still think there could have been more detail. Well, it's personal I'm opinion. I'm really honest. I know it look, it was a beautiful dress, she couldn't look better, but as she kinda of got out of the car I was like, um, is that it? <laughs> I know it's like a terrible thing to say, but and but you know what else I say, and I would, and a hand on heart say this: that's the look she wanted. That's what she wanted. Absolutely. That's what she wore. 
and that's all that counts. But and I think the veil. Man, who are we to tell her? You know? I think the veil plays an important part of it because it was so big she couldn't have anything. Apparently, too much. it was the same length as exactly the same length as Diana's trail. Yeah, she looks unbelievable. Just unbelievable, though. Still, come on. Oh my gosh, she looked incredible, and that neckline was sensational. But it's very different to what's out on the catwalk at the moment. So if you see the bridal catwalks at the moment, it's all about so much detail. So it actually wasn't to. Tr you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. to trend. I mean, there are, there are there are some modest dresses like that, but yeah, it was it was modest. It was covered up. Um, but yeah, she looked sensational. But I think she took everyone by surprise with both the designer. I don't think it was one of the touted names and the actual style. So well done her for keeping it for keeping it all under wraps. Um, Liam Kingswell, do you know Liam? Saying loving the live stream. Ah, I don't, <laughs> but hi Liam. Hi Liam, great to have you with us. And Brenda's saying Karen is fabulous with or without makeup. She is, she has such good skin. This is a thing with a lot of some brides as well who want to wear really thick, heavy makeup. And I look at their skin and I think, why? Because your face, your, your, your face is so, the skin is so gorgeous, why cover it up? Everyone's got their own, everyone sees themselves completely differently. Um, Let's keep guys for two seconds. Okay, we've got another question that's just come up. Which Have, I no, go for it and then I'll um, do the liner. Kim is saying, will brides follow the trend of less detail is more? I thought she looked incredible. Her beauty was illuminated by the dress. I think you said that so beautifully. Yeah. You're absolutely right. She's a stunning woman she didn't need the dress to do more more than it did i think i think because there was so much talk of ralph and Risa who designed her engagement um outfit that very heavily detailed um encrusted engagement look and there was almost everyone said that was going to be a dress designer i think we were just all a bit caught out but actually it was stunning i mean that craftsmanship that went into that dress to create that shape and it it was sensational, elegant, stylish. Um, I thought her mum looked fabulous, and she was a real star. Um, but it's all about, as I always say, it's your way doing your way. That's what she wanted. Your way doing um, your way. That's I like that. Yeah, yeah. You, I always say your Jewish wedding, your way, because especially with the Jewish weddings. There's so many opinions. Um, I think in kind of Jewish dynamics, everyone feels free to chip in and say what they think and what you should be doing. And the rabbi says you should be doing this and the caterer says you should be doing that. And Pinterest says you must do that. And um, you know, and you get it from all angles and it's really hard to cut out that noise and yes. work out what you want. And that's my whole mantra with Smash in the Glass is it's, your way being your way. So have those wonderful traditions, but make them your own, make them reflect you and your partner. But um, you know, I've had that with makeup as well, where um, the family have dictated how they should have their makeup, whereas it's the bride. The bride the has- The family dictated yeah. their makeup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one I haven't heard. Yeah, and I just, I- What do you mean? We, what, we go to a trial? In terms of how they think that they should have the makeup, and ah, you know, if the bride funny. wants to wear lashes, the bride, you know, you should wear lashes. I know your family know you really well, but do what you want. It's your big day, you have one shot at it, go for it. And I always tell the brides that, in our members club, which I've commented on actually, because Philip has got a special offer for our members club. So we have a members club for smashing the glass. So if you are a, if you're engaged and you want to be part of our club, um, I won't tell you all the goodies, but there's a link at the top if you want to find out more. But what I always tell them is your parents have had their wedding and they think often that their input is important because they think maybe you don't know how to plan a wedding, but you do, you really do. And you'll call in for their help as and when you need it. And obviously they want to be included. Include them in the things that aren't important to you. Maybe you're not a flowers person or a cake person, so get them involved in that. But the things that are important to you, it's got to be your way and they've got to respect that there's a few things that are so important to you. They cannot interfere. Um, so, Kim says, oh yeah, we've done that. And then Brenda says, I love the gown. It was just right for her. Simplistic and classy as well as flawless makeup. Um, and on Instagram, Dove's and Peacock said, with Indian weddings, it's the same. And with Indian weddings, I think she means about all the opinions. Yeah. Um, and also with Jewish weddings, there's a lot of logistics of um, 
even more so than, than other weddings, a lot to plan and it can, it can feel very overwhelming. So with our club, I take all the overwhelm and stress away for our members and it's great fun as well. So, and you get a ton of discounts. So for instance, Philippa for all our VIB brides, VIB stands for very important bride in the club, she offers a really generous 10% discount, which is so kind, thank you. <laughs> so Only for you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um have a look on that link you can you actually it's not on instagram pop it on instagram later look up. you can find out more but um yeah i feel like weddings have become so much more complicated than than ever before there's just too much inspiration everywhere another thing i say is do you know what just shut the computer sometimes shut your phone walk away and think when you look back at your wedding in 10 years time, what kind of things do you want to see in the pictures? And that, that's how you work out what's, what's important to you and how to kind of push out some of that white noise. The noise. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, lot of noise. Um, We're not far off with the completion of the look. Fabulous. <laughs> I'm so lucky. On a random Thursday evening. Oh, wow. Wow. Ah, I feel 10 years younger as well. Oh, good. I've done my job then. <laughs> um, we've got loads of people on Instagram, but I haven't been able to read some of the comments. Oliver's saying, hey. Instagram, ask questions as well. They're just saying hi, waving. I think people are a bit lazier on Instagram. But also, it's the watch, isn't it? It's what? <laughs> Watching. What, what's, what do you Watching mean? Watching everything. Yeah. On Facebook, we get lots more comments. We love our Facebook lives, but I'm trying to do more Instagram as well. Instagram live. So, what's everyone's favourite makeup look? That's what I always like. Like, what, what do you mean? Do, by you that? do you follow trends? Have you got certain celebrities that you love the look of um, in terms of makeup? Is there one celebrity you're like, I just want to look like her all the time? Yeah. Is there is there what's someone you don't want to look like? Can't you know, well, type something. Probably. Type something in the comments and tell us what celeb look you absolutely love, or you'd love to look like, or you'd love to know how they achieve that look. Um, it's always kind of, for me, it's kind of effortless kind of glamour, effortless elegance. I love a yeah. sort of slick, polished look myself. What um, do you not like? What do you mean? Is there certain things, so for example, you really have to feel and be someone who loves red lipstick if you were to walk down the aisle with red lipstick on, for no, example. No, not red lipstick. No. <laughs> I think people that wear, love red lipstick literally wear it day in, day out, don't they? They can't imagine themselves. Yes, or if you have someone, I had a bride who had a 1950s style wedding, so as much as they don't wear too much red lipstick, they just wanted to keep within the style of the wedding. So when I sit down with my brides and we design the look, you know, I'm not just gonna come in and t tell you what you want to do, what I think you should do. I like to hear about the style of the wedding and so that we can design the look from, from the beginning um, to make sure to make sure it fits with the theme. It doesn't mean that if you're having a fifties uh, wedding that you have to wear a red lipstick. And I've got but a question for you: Does it make a difference to the makeup and what you'll suggest if it's an outdoor ceremony or indoor ceremony? Good question. So this is a really really difficult one because obviously when you go inside and it goes quite dark, your uh, makeup is kind of diffused. But then you don't want it really heavy so that when you have your garden ceremony you're looking like you've got thick makeup on. So you have to find that fine balance of having it, um, it's a less is more. And then when you want to go into the, the room and you want to put more blush or more contouring on, do it when you go into the room rather than one when you're outside. What right? about in, in general for bridal photography where you want to look great in the photos but you don't want to look caked up? I know, I know. And th this is a really hard question that um, I have to explain to my brides a lot is that because I have a background in fashion, I know how photography works. Your blusher, everything to needs to be, I personally think, 50% stronger than I your normal too. makeup. I do and also for the Facebook Lives, I always slap Especially it on. That's why I felt <laughs> so it. naked going... Uh, going completely makeupless at the beginning because I always, especially blush, it just adds a bit of life into me. I so love blusher. We're just going to keep quite still because we're just going into the mascara for literally 30 seconds. Um, I am using a waterproof mascara here, guys. This is really important to make sure you use a waterproof mascara. Oh. We're all good. No, you're all good. Blink! Oh, God. 
Yeah. And Karen has fantastic lashes. <laughs> Are you big um, into mascara? Yeah, I love mascara. Again, I've been using the same. You have mascara amazing lashes. Oh my god! So you're someone who doesn't necessarily need lashes. You've got lashes, and I could, if I was to sit for another ten minutes, I could build and build and build, yeah. and really wing your lashes out. Oh. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. How are we doing for time? Are we good. Yeah, we are good. Just got um, a to do. So we also, just if anyone's just tuning in, we are actually coming to you live from the wedding gallery in central London, which is the world's first and most amazing, as it stands, wedding department store. There's actually anything and everything here for weddings, and I mean everything. It's incredible. It's 20,000 square foot in central London. Um, Look it up if you haven't been here. Bridesmaids, groomswear, dresses, makeup. We're in actually the makeup uh, beauty area where you can do a little tour at the end. Um, I mean, literally everything. Flowers, cakes, wedding planners, photographers, videographers. I could go on and on. So definitely come here if you haven't already. It's wonderful. Um, it's your one-stop shop for everything you yeah, need yeah. here. And it even smells fabulous. You walk in and you're like, I want to live here. I want to bring a super so flower and live fragrant, here. isn't it? Can I just me? Um, so, let's get some. Any more questions? When we did our last one, we had loads more questions, but I think because we build it as a QA and a last time, didn't we? Your lashes are ridiculous. We build it. <laughs> Thank you. We build it today as recreating. So, top tips for if somebody just wants to recreate Megan's look for a night out and they're just at home and. It's not for bridal makeup. Like what? What? I think the one thing with with Meg, if you want the Megan look, it's all about skin. It's all about having that really flawless, dewy skin. You're not going to be wanting to throw your makeup so on. So primer, foundation. If you're if you're going to be, some, I wouldn't put primer. You don't necessarily need primer if you're only going out for a couple of hours. Although it does help your makeup no, sit. Primer is all about long lasting. The longevity, but then you get some primers which give an illumination. So it depends what you want from your makeup. I don't ever leave the house without primer. I want after Even this if session, I'm going I to the primer shops. and I want that twinkle Charlotte Tilbury glow thing. Light wand. The light, light wand. wand. I want Look up for me. Just. So something with Meghan Markle, she didn't have a huge amount of mascara on the bottom lashes. It was actually kept quite natural. But I'm just going to paint a little bit more on your lashes. You've got such big eyes that it's just going to help to really open and widen them. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, skim. And what about the lip? What would you do with so, the natural lip? So with the lip, um, from what I've um, read, Daniel Martin actually used a tinted balm. Oh wow, wasn't so, he? So yeah, it's from what I, I read on Glamour. But that's quite a brave move. I mean, I don't think there's many brides that just wear lip balm. Um, no, well it's a, tin it's a tinted balm. So I don't know, the products weren't released, so I don't know if it's a long wear one. Yeah. Um, but it's something that she can reapply, yes. so I don't think it ultimately matters. I'm personally not a fan of the long wear lipsticks out there. Every, sure. Anyone who knows me knows that I don't love them because they dry the lips out. I'm excited because Sharon McGoey is watching and saying, you look stunning, Karen. And Sharon, you were mentioned earlier because Sharon is the friend of mine that introduced me to my husband um, on a blind date and also I said to her, it was a plan only, I said to her, I'm not bothering with a makeup artist, I'll just do my own makeup. And she said to me, don't be ridiculous, you've got to get a makeup artist and feel pampered and, and uh, you know, look fantastic. And I told that story, Sharon, and I said, but I don't, and, and then she reckoned, she found me a makeup artist and she was so right. I would definitely, if you're in two minds, if you're 100% one of those that wants to do your own makeup, fine. But if you're in two minds, a million percent uh, book yourself a makeup artist and feel fabulous. Yeah. It's when else are you gonna be spoiled and I know. looking your very best? And and it really does make a difference. Okay. These are uh, oh, this is the thing. blotting paper that apparently Sharon also if you've got any beauty questions, I know you like your beauty questions, ask away. So the We're probably only gonna be live for about another ten minutes, so get your questions in if you've got anything. Bridal beauty, wedding planning, I can answer. The beauty in general, we're here. So I've blotted your, um, as 
as Cameron's getting a little bit hot, I don't want to just pile the makeup, the powder on the T-zone because it's actually going to cake the makeup on. So um, Key, and actually what uh, Megan's makeup artist used, not necessarily this brand, but he used blotting sheets to absorb that excess oil. Then you can go in with a little bit more powder in the T-zone. These are great to carry around with you, by the way, in your purse for touching up your makeup. I always advise these. Really, really good. And were you surprised that she had her hair um, like this and not down? I can put my hair up to complete the look. <laughs> I'll do her signature messy bun because she does love a messy bun. A few bits. Do you want to do my messy bun? Do I want to do your messy bun? I've got makeup all over my hands, so probably not. I think I'll um, just take it loose for a minute. So we've got a question about contouring advice. Oh, we're going to go on to that right at the end. I don't even know what that done. means. What is contouring advice? So contouring, which I'm going to do right at the end on Karen, what is, is contouring? contouring is to bring definition to your uh -huh. face. So um, not the con. When, the thing is, when you say contouring, it's not like the stripes that you see around the face, which is what we have seen go crazy on Instagram. It's just defining the cheekbones, defining, defining the jawline, giving the face a nice framework. And I've done a bit already with some bronzer. But now that I've seen everything together, I'm going to go through and contour um, Karen's face. I think it's a great idea for photos, definitely. Alice is saying you're looking gorgeous. I've never had so many compliments. Are you talking about me or Philippa? But anyway, yeah. I've never had so many compliments on a face that lie. Deservedly so. I feel fantastic. This is going to be your trick to talk, talk with the mouth. Oh, close. It's like when you go to the dentist and they start asking you about your life story while they've got a tour. Well, they've got all kinds of things inside. Right, them. but I do this with lipstick. Apply the lipstick and uh, start asking them questions. Why you can't talk? Mm. So tell us about the colour you've chosen. So I have chosen, actually, let's just go like this me because I've just drawn on your teeth. I've chosen two colours by Hourglass, which are these two here. These two here. And they are Dreamer and Activist. And the reason I'm mixing them is because I... Just like um, Megan has like a kind of peachy pinky uh, tint to her lips, but I don't want just the pink on its own. I want to put a little bit of coral element into that as well. So I always like to mix two lipsticks. I think you can get your real perfect shade. Um, definitely. And the brand did you say? Hourglass. Oh no, is it Hourglass or My By Terry? I've forgotten what I've used. Hourglass, I was right. It is an hourglass one. Okay, yeah, this brings the whole look to life, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, really, I just think like, sometimes what I do is I show the bride the look before the lipstick's gone on, because lips can throw you. And if it's not your colour, it can change the whole look. I love a bit of a lip colour. This is a fantastic colour, I think it's very, very bridal, but you need these two to, you know, you need to create <laughs> these two. Right, let me just finish off with a little so bit of contouring. So do you think she's created a trend for a bit more of a kind of a shine on the face rather than, did it used to be all very matte and... The, uh, well, the trend right now is having that really glowy um, complexion and I don't think that has gone for quite a long time. It is, it's just kind of, just wake up like this with a fresh face. Suck your cheekbones in, my darling. <laughs> like this? Yeah, so we'll just go through. Turn the face to the left for me. Fish face kind of thing. Yeah, so we're just going to contour and bring Karen's. Karen's got lovely, you can see down here on Instagram, just because the, the camera's there, you've got um, a lovely contour going on here. Gosh. So Sharon's saying, great lip colour, remember the names for me, Keza. So let's. Um, a little hmm? bit more? Yeah. Still the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> And then we'll You'll have to write those it. lip colours down for me, haven't Yeah. I'm going to go and add a little bit of concealer around the jawline So what are well. the, the advice for contouring? Less is more. You do not want a stripe on your face. But how do you, how do <laughs> you get that look. balance? Cut him. How do you get the balance? Uh, with the... Well, it's, it's building it slowly. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right, layering it it's on. It's totally, totally building it slowly. Let me just go in just along that jawline just for a bit of concealer. Turn this way. Love my concealer. Oh, my God. <laughs> Again, concealer recommendations? Uh, so many out there, Karen. I mean, 
everyone's got their holy grail. I'm just Does it depend it. on your skin? It color? does, yeah. I mean, I've been um, a huge fan recently of the Bobbi Brown Full Coverage Concealer, which I believe has just won an award at the Vogue um, Beauty Awards 2018. Uh, that's great for under the eyes and all round, and it doesn't, it's not cakey. Yeah, that's the You know? Thing. Look up. Just going to perfect you the look tomorrow up. mind popping in some links to some of these yeah products. i will pop i will do a and handle. also make sure you pop a link into your amazing youtube channel as well philip has got a fantastic youtube channel called blend and pop with all kinds of tips and tricks i don't know how she has time she's a mum. she's a full-time bridal makeup artist and hence the YouTube, bags under the eyes youtuber <laughs> um josephine saying you always look flawless philly you have to show me how to do my face in two minutes i uh, never wear makeup that's a bride of mine been waiting for the day when i have the time inclination to spend even five minutes suddenly realized with two kids it's never going to happen <laughs> It's all about prioritising. And finding that look, which is what Blends and Pocket talks about as well, to get out of the house quickly, with no time at all. Claire's just joined on Instagram. Claire, you've got to see what I looked like at the, uh, the beginning. I'm telling you, I felt like, God, it was painful going live with no makeup, but it was worth it. Turned up looking like this. <laughs> I feel gorgeous. I've got to do a very, very quick stand back just to see the look. Just turn this way for me. Oh, Philippa, you're amazing. So brides, if you want, if you're still with your makeup artist, I am genuinely hand on heart recommending this amazing message. It's lovely to be around. And look, look what she's done. You have to rewind to the beginning to see how I, how I all look like in the first, how I all look like. <laughs> so excited I can't speak. How I looked like, <laughs> how I looked in the first few minutes with no makeup on. And also this is with like rubbish hair as well. So. But, you, <laughs> but it's so natural, darling. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And also the other thing is you, she's so lovely to have around. You want someone who you absolutely love being around. Um, and we'll put your contact details in tomorrow as well. But Philippa's Facebook page reveal? and stuff like that. What's the big reveal? I've been able to see in the screen. Oh, you can see more onto a, onto a mirror. Oh my goodness. Okay, I want everyone to see those close-ups of the eye. The eyes are amazing. Can everyone see? Lovely. You may want to bring, the, bring it this one round. What, like this? Yeah. There we go, in front of the light. Wow. Look at that. This is how you create your Meghan Markle look. So, Inge is saying, I think I pronounced the name properly, Inge Hunter. Oh, it looks so good. So come on, guys, if you like this look, so close the send eyes, me so the hearts. See the eyes. Send me some hearts. <laughs> send me some loves. Send me some likes across the screen, and let's give a virtual round of applause to Philippa. Um, I hope you've got your hot take now. To wit, to woo. <laughs> um, Brenda, awesome look. Everybody loves it. Um, everybody's loving it. Of course they are. I feel amazing. Um, so thank you. Pleasure. It's been good to And you did it so quickly as well. well. It's walking and talking. Back to my presenting days. So how many years have you been doing this now? Uh, professionally, I'd say about eight years, but I have been in makeup for a lot longer. And how did you get into bridal specifically? Because it's a tough one, you only get so, one chance with the bridal. Do you know what? Uh, in the course I did in London at AOFM, there was a bridal section and I just fell in love with it. And I, the thing is, you've got to love working with brides, you've got to love beauty. It's a high pressure I love making people feel great about themselves, and I think that's really important um, in this kind of job. I love the way you've got that. Dewey. We're very bright dewey, on the light dewey. actually right now. So. <laughs> the dewy look. The dewy look. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag dewy. Um, Emily said looks amazing. Very sun-kissed. Loads of hearts and everyone. Doreen Singh looks amazing. Well done, Philip. I was, I was going to say as well, if you wanted to, um, you, you could also go through with the James Reed. This is a this is like a spritz, so you can spritz it over your arms and your décolleté as Should well. I I'm not going to do it now because it's going to go over your dress, but it's it's like a James Reed. A oh, Sharon will like this. She likes the tan. James Reed gradual tan. Can you see that? Well, this is just because it's got some. It's got a. It's an H2O illuminating tan mist for your body. But it's, it's more like of a. It's more of a gradual tan. But if you want to have a society of tanning as well if you want to tan yourself and you don't want to go and have it freshly done 
I'm a huge fan of this. You do it the night before, you wash it off, it doesn't come off on your dress and it gives you such a natural glow. It's amazing. Go. We'll link to all the products um, tomorrow. Um, Emily on Instagram saying, I always get worried the dewy look can end up looking sweating after the Israeli dancing. Any tips? So, yes. Uh, where are they? Where are the blossom pa papers? These ones. So have some blossing papers in your clutch, in your wedding clutch. I'm going to do That's my such a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to do my finishing touches. It's just a bit of my little Bobby Brown touch at the end. And it just feels so nice. I said to Philip from the moment she started, your fingers, just everything. It's such a nice experience. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to definitely get some before and afters, I'm telling you. Um, so yeah, this is NYX matte blotting paper. This is, you can find a means that you don't have to apply more makeup and it's thick. Well, no, no, no. no you, sorry, this, I don't know what is, I'm talking about. This is about. not about <laughs> applying more makeup. This is just about <laughs> absorbing excess shine so that you, if you're really oily and you don't want to keep throwing on lots of powder you can just use these very gently and just you know which is I want I need to do now because I'm hot and just absorb that excess oil that's kind of seeped through. Instagram's going to stop us in 20 seconds because we may only do one hour oh. so we'll say goodbye to Instagram and if you want a few minutes more you can hop onto facebook.com slash slash and glass but really we're going to round it up there's a oh I just want to do a quick little tour if you want to see a tour of the beauty area the wedding yes. gallery I'm going to do a yeah. and we're going to go for a walk. I think Instagram's finished. So come and have a look at the wedding gallery so you can see us in the mirror. Come with us. So you can have a... So this is the beauty area here at the wedding gallery. It is with um, Urban Retreat. And <laughs> it's just amazing. There's a whole Jo Malone. There's makeup everywhere. There's a hair styling area. And basically you can do your trials here. Um, and your hair and then on the day they will come to you wherever you are so this is just one little bit of the wedding gallery I am just going to quickly show you one other corridor just to give you a sense of how amazing it is it's in Marylebone in central London and I'm just going to show you one little corridor but it goes way way beyond this so it's just here okay so that's the wedding gallery so Definitely come pay a visit if you haven't already. Let's go back to our little spot and we'll say goodbye because I think we've taken up more than enough of your time this evening, but it's so been worth it. And if you're watching on replay and you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and Philippa and I will respond. So that's it from us. Let's say goodbye. And if you want... Oh, close-ups. <laughs> if you want to follow Philippa on Instagram, it's at Philippa Louise Makeup, is it, on Instagram? Yeah. And what's your website? Uh, philippalouisemakeup.co.uk There you go. And if you need any more contact details, just contact Smash in the Glass on Fast Done. So bye from us. Have a great evening and see you soon. Bye. <laughs>